Okay, yes we can't. Yes we can or yes we can't? Okay. So uh, this was a nice introduction. This is uh, joint work with Adam Young. We have been doing it for 15 years. Started it about 15 years ago. So it's a little bit perspective and a little bit uh, retrospective. And uh, well, I was introduced. The guy said, you know, I don't know anything. I don't, can't even say these things. So, uh, sounds like nonsense, indeed, admittedly. All right, so, uh, so what is it? So, cryptovirology is the study of applications of cryptography, and I'm a cryptographer, uh, to malicious software. And uh, we first published it, started publishing it from 96, and kleptography, is in some way the other way around that it 's like the application of malicious software to cryptography so in some sense it 's investigating how modern cryptographic paradigms and uh, tools can be used to uh, strengthen and uh, to improve uh, uh, new malware. And uh, just to give you the perspective of the time of the initiation of this work, it's the mid-90s, the big Schneier book, Cryptography is going to save the world, the big equalizer, everybody can write cryptography and have secure systems. And uh, applications are to defend computers against all evil and so on. And the adversary are the bad guys, and we use the crypto against them. So, if everybody thinks this way, you might as well think the other way. So that's what we did. How to use the cryptography on the attack side of computers. Not that we wanted to attack, but it's interesting to see the scope of what can be done with a technology like cryptography. So we started in 96, in 2000, I, shamefully it's kind of a commercial break here. We wrote a book in 2004 that is called uh, Malicious Cryptography Exposing Cryptovirology. And uh, that was about nine, ten years into the investigation, but I'll cover a little bit more here. And uh, the, way, uh, the way we uh, decided to, to look at it is as, as a technology. So we view malware or a software that, uh, like viruses that people considered bad simply as a technology, neutral. Neutral view. And then uh, the idea was to look at malware that uh, try, tries to hide its presence, uh, conceal secret information uh, the, despite uh, attempts to reverse engineer, uh, can withstand uh, certain faults like uh, people try to. Uh, uh, trace uh, what it does or where it comes from and so on. And uh, the idea was that this will give insight into uh, what must be done to protect against these threats. Because when you, it's, it's upon security professionals and hackers, and I love hackers because they always teach me new things, you have to always look for threats. And if you have any sense of responsibility, you also have to look for countermeasures to those threats. And that was in this line of work. And uh, what we did is not uh, something about breaking systems themselves. You know, 
virus need to penetrate system in some sense. But it's about the exploitation of this combination of technologies uh, once uh, breaking into the system uh, has been achieved. Okay? And we started, uh, we started uh, simply as applications of cryptography uh, to viruses and other malware. And somehow during the, this investigation, we also got to investigate the opposite. How can uh, cryptographic trojans can be inserted into crypto systems and what attacks they can do. So that's interesting, uh, interesting, interesting demonstration of that you get to something that you don't start with. All right. So uh, a little bit about history of malware. I'll be very brief here, and I'm going to omit a lot of the history. Just a few, uh, few lines of uh, important uh, development, because I say we treat malware simply as, as technology. We don't say it's bad or good, just what it is. So, in fact, we can trace malware all the way back to von Neumann. And uh, the reproducing finite automata idea that he had. An automata that produces output, and the output is the description of the same automata. That was the first replicating program. And this was already in the 40s when uh, almost nobody here was alive. These viruses were alive, but we were not. In the 50s, especially in uh, Bell Laboratories, uh, it was the hobby of uh, various geeks, Claude Shannon among, among them. Core Wars is a, an example of uh, viral uh, software that uh, was used for uh, games. And then in the 60s, uh, malware was recognized as a threat to integrity and availability of classified information. The documents from uh, the department, the USA Department of Defense, uh, and the notions of access control, mandatory access control, and so on. If you read the documents from the 60s, you see that they were very much motivated by uh, this uh, conceived uh, threat. In the 70s, advanced malware uh, design begins, and uh, also advanced uh, realization that crypto systems can uh, carry information that was not intended to by uh, Simmons. And maybe those uh, information, this information that can be carried inside the crypto system can be a Trojan. In the 80s, viruses start to appear in the wild. So this comes together with the PC revolution, home computing. And Cohen started to investigate viruses from an academic point of view. And a famous event is the Morris worm that spreads across the internet. and. Uh, takes out uh, parts of it. And the realization of the global threat of uh, something that can start as an experiment in one location and can spread glo globally was realized. In the 90s, major viruses with major uh, impact, when I say virus, I mean worms and so on, on various commercial system and uh, people start measuring, using money, how much you lose on, on a virus, just because of disruption. I want to, to point out one, uh, one interesting uh, design, actually implementation and design.